Here is a Hi-Fi sound project model TA4000 receiver. There was a whole line of various different components with this Hi-Fi sound project label. And those units were sold under various different brand names. This particular one is a Löwe. Other brands include Pi, Eris, Aristona, mostly brands owned by Philips. This appears to be made in Asia, probably Japan. It doesn't say anything, but looking inside, it doesn't look very European made to me. This particular unit has a couple of problems, one being a rather annoying intermittent problem in the FM section. The other problem is the phono preamplifier. As we turn on the receiver and turn up the volume, there is this terrible staticky noise. It's mostly in the right channel. It does get a bit more quiet when you connect a record player, but it never goes away completely, so something has to be done about that. Looking inside, by the way, I was not able to find a service manual for this, so no schematics or anything, unfortunately. This right there appears to be the phono preamplifier, this section of the circuit board four transistors. These are two SC693 transistors. Right there, 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 and there. And I did some research online and it seems like these like to go noisy. Now, I did use the freeze spray to cool down semiconductors, as usually that causes some change in the noise that they create if they are faulty. But in this in this case, nothing. I froze. Well, I, I've actually been freezing a lot of components in this. Also trying to find the intermittent problem in the FM tuner, but uh, these problems don't seem to be temperature dependent. So anyway, doing the online research, it seems these transistors do like to go noisy. And I did find a replacement that was recommended. It's the 2SC1845, and it just so happens that I have four of those in my parts bin. These are pin compatible. Quite interesting, I tested these transistors and they all read about the same current amplification factor of 120. So I'm going to go and replace those uh, most likely faulty 2SC693 transistors, NPN transistors. We'll see if that corrects this uh, noise. And it seems like the two SC693 transistors were still good, because the behavior has not changed at all with the new two SC1845 transistors. So I've now unsoldered what looks to be the output of the phono preamplifier. So you can see I just pulled out these wire wrap terminals. If I now turn on the receiver and turn up the volume, the noise is gone. There is just a little bit of hiss like you have on pretty much any budget priced amplifier. So, the problem definitely has to be somewhere in this phono preamplifier circuit or in uh, whatever 
goes in, but I think that's all just passive circuitry. This is starting to become really interesting. I reconnected the output of the phono preamplifier there and there, and I disconnected the input of the phono preamplifier over there. Now these wires go back to the input selector switch because this receiver does have two phono inputs. And what do you know? The noise is gone. So it turns out the problem is not in this phono preamplifier at all. Somewhere else. Somewhere at the input. There's really just a little bit of hiss like you have on any phono preamplifier due to the high sensitivity. I am now monitoring the output of the input selector switch going to the phono preamplifier, which is still disconnected. And as you can see, we have a whopping 28 volts coming out of the input selector on the one channel. On the other channel, we have about 22 volts. So that is very strange. Now, there is not any DC going into the phono preamplifier. There are some coupling capacitors. So if I switch the scope to AC coupling and increase the input sensitivity, there is the noise that we can hear. And that, of course, gets right through the coupling capacitors, causing all those problems. So I'll have to investigate this, uh, this voltage problem. This is really a strange problem. Here is one of the outputs of the input selector switch going to the phono preamplifier. Here is the selector switch in the phono 1 position that connects to over here. And that, as you can see, goes over here. And this is another wire wrap terminal. And that connects this straight to the DIN jack in the back, the Phono 1 DIN jack. So there is really no place where this voltage could sneak in. I have already cleaned this input selector switch, so I'm pretty sure that's not the problem. So the next thing is I'm going to scrape off this circuit glue, because that can turn slightly conductive over the years. But given that it's not, you know, this this part of the circuit board is not related to what I've just shown you, I don't really know how that could be the problem here. The old circuit glue has been thoroughly cleaned off the circuit board. It turned out to be extremely brittle, so most likely it was also conductive. And the noise is still there. Yes. This just would have been too good to be true. I'm really starting to run out of ideas. I cleaned the input selector switch for yet another time, and I actually had the unit turned on while doing that, and it made absolutely no difference. So it can't just be a dirty switch. I've also disconnected the wire coming from the DIN jack, but the noise is still there. You can hear some of the signal coming through if I touch that contact. So, whatever it is, there is something wrong on this circuit board. I'm recording this outro several weeks after recording the video. I was originally going to scrap it, but I think it does show a really interesting problem, and it also shows that I'm not able to repair everything. So, to make a quick conclusion, I think the input selector switch 
was bad on that receiver. I later on did hours and hours of testing the FM tuner. In the beginning of this video I mentioned that that was also having an intermittent problem and it seemed like that was also related to the input selector switch because that also selected between FM and AM. So now you're probably going to say, oh, the spray can is not enough. You have to take the switch all apart. You have to clean the switch contacts individually. And yes, that is certainly possible. However, it would have been an awful lot of work to do that. You would have had to rip the whole chassis of the receiver apart to even get the circuit board out of there. And then, of course, desolder the switch, take that all apart, clean it, so on and so forth, and I was just not going to do that. Also, this receiver was actually the property of somebody else. He gave it to me to repair it. So, with all this, I would not have been confident to say, yes, I did repair it. No, it would have been something along the lines of, uh, yeah, I think I repaired it, and that's just not good enough. So, yeah, I returned the receiver to its owner, and that's the end. So, thank you for watching.